and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and part two of our basic look at adjustment layers inside Photoshop Elements. In part one we created the effect you see before you on screen, turning the previously red jelly and raspberries blue, but unfortunately leaving the table slightly discoloured as well. And in this video we're going to fix that with a little bit of help from layer masks that come as standard with the adjustment layer that we've added. So first things first, take a look at the actual adjustment layer over here in the layers panel. This layer contains all of the adjustments we made in the previous exercise, but it also has this additional white layer attached that we know and love as a mask. Now first of all, if you're new to the concept of masking, then I'd highly recommend you check out my basic masking videos here at freephotoshop.com. It's such an interesting topic, I've divided it into three videos, all of which I'll make sure there's a link to right here on the free Photoshop website, and more specifically on the page you're viewing this tutorial at, assuming of course that you are viewing this video here at freephotoshop.com. You can also get to the basic masking videos yourself by tapping in masks or basic masks in the search bar on the left hand side of the site. And just a, a quick warning as well, those videos were recorded in the full version of Photoshop, so some things might not be applicable. For instance, those masks that I'm showing you in those videos are layer masks, whereas we are using the masks associated with adjustment layers. To be honest, there's no difference between the two different masks, it's just that one is attached to a layer and the other this one here is attached to adjustment layers. So it's a really good way of actually seeing what masks are and how powerful they can be. So what actually is a mask? Well, a mask allows us to hide and reveal certain parts of a layer. So instead of deleting or erasing stuff, we can hide it temporarily and then bring it back when we need it. We control what's visible to the viewer and what's hidden from eye by painting inside the layer mask, or the adjustment layer mask in this case, with a grey scale brush. Anywhere that's white is completely visible, anywhere that's black is completely hidden, and the various greys between white and black afford various levels of opacity. So as we move through light grey, we start to hide more of the layer and as the grey gets darker we hide more and more of the layer until finally it's black and we've hidden everything. So if we look at the mask we've got attached to this particular adjustment layer we can see that it's completely white and that's the way they will always be by default meaning that all the modifications from the hue saturation adjustment layer are currently visible. Now that's great, but we want to hide this blue tinge on the table, which means we need to go in and paint on the mask, and we need to paint with black to hide this part of the effect. So let's go ahead and give it a try. First of all, we need to activate the brush tool by coming over here to the toolbox and clicking on it. And if you can't see it here in Photoshop Elements 8, then just click and hold on this box and then select it from the flyout menu like so. We can also press B on the keyboard to activate the brush tool. Now we want to find an appropriately sized brush and we can do that by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. That's the square bracket keys by the way found on the right of the P key. So a brush about this size should work quite well for us. Now come up to the options bar and you should see this little brush icon like this one. Give it a click and then come down to this hardness option. Now that's going to be a matter of taste so the hardness of this brush is going to depend on your artistic flair I guess but I'd recommend you follow along with me and enter a value of 50% so we're working with the same brush that has a bit of softness associated with it. All right, press enter or return to accept that value and now come down to these background foreground swatches at the bottom of the toolbox. I want to ensure we have black set as our foreground color and white as the background. So I'll press the letter D on the keyboard, that's D for default, 
and the swatches will then be reset to their default values. And then go ahead and press the letter X on the keyboard to switch them over so we achieve the colors we want. Now we have a black brush and the adjustment layer active in the layers panel over here on the right hand side. So I'll start painting away in the image window to remove the effects of this adjustment layer from the table area. And I'm happy to go into the banner like so. I'll show you how we can put that right in a couple of seconds. But for now, I just want to paint away everything outside of the glass to keep it straightforward. And when we get to these straight edges, the best way to work is to click somewhere like here and then shift click further along that straight edge like so. And we'll repeat that the same the other side. So we'll click around about here and then once again we'll shift click around here. Then we'll just paint away in the rest of the area that we want to remove the blue cast from. Now the great thing about masking like this is that we don't have to be too exact because if we mask away too much detail say for instance we accidentally mask away these berries at the top of the glass we can easily paint them back in by pressing the X key once again to switch the foreground color to white we can then see that happen if we check out the swatches down here now we can simply paint the effect back into our berries turning them back into the scrumptious blue that they were previously alright I'll hit the X key again and just make sure I've got everything I'm not taking a huge amount of care here, but if you're doing this for real on your own projects or even on this one, then you may want to zoom in and make sure you've got every last detail. Finally, I'll switch back to white by hitting the X key once again and just make sure I clear up any areas that I didn't want excluded. And that looks really good. Now if we look at the mask in the layers panel, we can see all the changes we've made represented in the thumbnail. And to see that thumbnail up close and personal, I'll hold down the Alt key here on the PC or the Option key on the Mac and then click the thumbnail to see the mask in the image window itself. Now we can still work on it further should we want to, but it's usually harder to work like this because we can no longer see the actual image we're trying to mask. So I'll Alt or Option click to return the preview to the image itself. We can also shift click the mask thumbnail to turn it off and therefore reveal the color modifications before we applied the mask and see the real difference the mask is making to the image. Much better as far as the table goes, many more realistic colors going on and less of a color cast that was perhaps hard to notice when we had the effect on screen. I'll shift click the mask once more to turn it back on and see our revised image and that looks good. Alright, the final thing I want to do with this image is to bring back the blue hue saturation adjustment layer on the banner. And remember that we did have that just a few moments ago, but we removed it when we masked away the blue cast from the table. Now it's time to put it back, and as always, there's plenty of ways to get the job done. However, since this is a tutorial on adjustment layers and their associated masks, I'm going to use those tools to get the job done in this image. And I'll show you how to get the job done using adjustment layers and masks in part three of this video. Thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. I'll see you in the third and final part of this tutorial.